Hello, my name is Marcel de Jong. I'm a senior technical specialist in the Americas and I'll be taking you through a little workflow demo on BOSS. Uh, BOSS is the Bifrost, stands for Bifrost Ocean Simulation System and is being introduced in Maya 2017. Uh, so I just wanted to take you through it and get, get you a basic feel for how it works and what it does. Um, so we have a ship in the scene here that I'm going to use and have it kind of cut through a surface and generate a, a bow wave and a wake. And I want to use, uh, for setup purposes, I want to use the BOSS uh, editor to do that. So this is a new editor where you can generate or you can set up a system of wave solvers and influences. So there's two kinds of wave solvers and we have two kinds of influences. Um, so the wave solvers can consist of either a basic wave solver, which is almost like a static wave solver, which responds to anything you put in it or drag through it. And we have a spectral wave solver, which is the wave solver that also has an internal wave generator built into it. For wave influences, we can use a piece of geometry um, to generate um, a, a wave or a wake. Uh, as well as images. We can use EXR images to uh, influence a wave, wave surface as well. With that, let's create a surface that we'll use for uh, the demo here. I'm going to go ahead and increase the size of this to about 40 units. And we'll increase the resolution of this as well to something like 200 or 256, depending a little bit on the hardware that you're running on. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the grid. Last thing I want to do is this surface looks, you know, it's very bright because it's very illuminated. We have some bright lights in the scene. Um, what I want to do is I want to assign a shader to it to kind of uh, make that darker. And then I already have a, an ocean sh shader in the scene that I'm going to use for this. So let's just go ahead and drag and drop that onto the surface. We'll use that. The reason why I'm using a darker shader like this because it's actually much easier to evaluate your, your waves. And with that, let's just play this back and see what that looks like. It's a basic animation of the ship kind of uh, traveling from one side of the surface to the other side. Um, so other things that I have turned on, and let's move this over here to the corner, is ambient occlusion, which uh, helps the look of it. I don't turn on anti-aliasing. It looks better for the geometry, but once the surface, the ocean surface, starts generating waves, the anti-aliasing might cause some problems, uh, some display problems. Uh, it creates white black specks all over the place. Let's go ahead and rewind this and start to generate a wave surface or a wave solver. So you just basically pick the surface and we're going to just start with the basic boss wave solver. And as soon as you introduce that, you can see there's a number of icons in here that are associated with turning things on or off, soloing things and caching things. And the same happens for influences. So once you have your wave solver selected, we can open it up and look at some of the settings in here that help control how this, uh, uh, how this responds to the ship. Um, so first off, we have the resolution. So for each of these solvers, you get a global section, global attributes like the resolution. You get a simulation section with simulation attributes, things like uh, gravity, uh, wave height, etc., And a caching section with some caching attributes. The same is true with the exception of simulation attributes for influence objects. Um, so if I wanted to go in and uh, create an influence object, I want to do that out of an object that's a lower resolution. So I'm going to turn on this proxy here. You can see what that looks like. And if I were to select just the proxy, uh, you can see that that is much lower resolution in resolution than the ship. The ship is about 900, just under 900,000 uh, polys. So with that proxy selected, I'm going to create an influence object. You can see here too, you get a number of icons, but we get also some uh, stuff that is unique to a boss geo property sheet. So in this case, you do get the checkbox, the solo, uh, the solo box or the solo button, the caching button, and then we also get a button to allow it to be a generator or a collider. And you can see that as I do this, it turns it on and off in the attribute editor as well. Any influence object can be a generator, a wave generator, or a collider, have a wave kind of bounce up to it and then have it kind of fan out away from the surface of the collider, uh, or both. 
So in this case, uh, we have that uh, proxy object be both. And I can now play this back, and we should already see a wave on the surface. So as it enters the surface, you'll see that behind the ship is starting to generate a very subtle bow or a uh, wake, which is not something, and this is why it's good to have a dark shader here, because with a little bit of a specular, it really helps you evaluate. So what I want to do now is uh, say, okay, this is obviously uh, not going to be uh, enough. Now, the other problem that I'm seeing is that the wave doesn't start until far into the surface. So one way to solve that is to go to the wave solver and to increase the uh, decay width to a value like three or four. And so now if I play this back, we should see something. Let's go ahead and rewind, play this back. We should see something that starts pretty much on the edge of our ocean surface. And the more wave we can get, the sooner we can get the wave to, to generate, the better. So that's the first step. Second is to increase maybe the amplitude of the uh, geo, of the generation, the wave generator. So let's go ahead and increase it to a value of six. You can see that it's already adjusting. This kind of adjusts interactively. So I can go ahead and slide this around and you can see a larger uh, wave come in. Now, one of the problems with generating waves this way is that you remember the shape of the proxy. Uh, you can see that it's kind of an elongate shape and it generates quite a nice wake, but it doesn't generate much of a bow wave. And that's really because a wave is generated at a certain speed in all directions from the object that we're using to generate it from and the ship is moving at the same time. So the ship in this case is essentially catching up with its own wave. And that's why we're not seeing a bow wave. We're just starting to see a wave maybe, you know, this far back onto the surface of the ship. So a number of things that we can do. First is the uh, generate expand value here. So the generate expand value starts at the surface of the generator or collider, in this case, the, um, the proxy object. I'm gonna increase this value to something like 24. Uh, so that increases essentially the band from within which a wave is generated um, by quite a bit. It also increases the size of your wave because it has a, an opportunity to uh, generate a wave over a much larger distance before it lets go and kind of simulates into the surface. So this is obviously not something that I want. So I might want to drop the amplitude down to one or maybe even lower just to kind of you know, modulate this down to something that looks halfway reasonable. I still want my wake to look good. Uh, yes, I do want a, a wave generated off the bow, but I may have to do that some other way. So in this case, you can see you get a pretty good looking wake and we're starting to see waves much farther up the length of this ship. So this is already quite a bit better, but maybe not quite where I need to be. So one of the things, one of the other things that you can do is when you're using um, uh, an emitter like that or a generator like that as a generator, but also as a collider, you get some collision controls that might help as well. So if I select my uh, my Boss Geo properties, you can see there's some collision controls in there. And if I were to turn off my ship and go back to my geo properties. Uh, you could set the offset in this case in the X direction, which is the direction along which this ship is moving. So we can set the uh, collision X to something like maybe uh, 32. And if I play that back, you can actually see we're now completely missing. It's offsetting it in the wrong direction. We're completely missing a bow wave. So maybe we'll set this to negative 32. Rewind that. And now we actually get a bit of a bow wave showing up that then results in a wave fanning out from the sides of the ship. Um, there's no real way to get better control in terms of magnitude or amplitude. You could, if you wanted to increase your generator expand, you could increase your collider offset to create a larger bow wave, but all those things will also affect the rest of your waves and your wake as well. So you may not want to do that. Instead, you may want to add another collision object or generator object in the bow of the ship. So let's go ahead and do that. If we bring back the ship. You can see that our waves are starting to look much better now along the side. 
uh, I may want to turn down the intensity just a little bit. You know, generally that's that's not too bad. It's a little big, but yeah, I'm exaggerating it for the demo as well. Um, so one of the things I might want to do next is create another object, and we'll just kind of move that over to the front of the ship. I'm going to scale this down to kind of occupy the volume of the bow there. Maybe move this back just a little bit, like right there. If I scale this up a little taller, we go a little deeper below as well. Uh, and then maybe I'll tilt this forward a bit, so it reaches forward just a little bit. And of course, I need to actually parent it in with the ship. There it is. And if I rewind this, that works. So now we can uh, use that object and add that in as another geo influence. And with that object turned or included, let's go ahead and hide that. We can access our um, second property sheet here. And we can give it a little bit of an amplitude. Let's set the amplitude to maybe like five and the generator expand to something like 12. And if I play this back, you can see that immediately it starts to generate a bow wave that is quite a bit bigger. Uh, that bow wave is starting to blend into the wave that's being generated off the proxy object for the ship. So uh, I might want to increase the size a bit, I might want to modulate how wide it goes or what my uh, generator expand value as well as my um, my amplitude are set to. If I set my amplitude to 12, you can see that I get a much larger wave there. That might be a little bit too much. So let's go back to like five or six or so. But the point is that we have con separate control over where wakes and waves are being generated off a ship. So this is looking um, a lot better than what it did before. The um, next step is that, let's say I wanted to have, in this case, you could see the wave pattern for this ship is uh, pretty much symmetrical, uh, but I might want to actually compensate for wind. Let's say the wind is coming in from the left and is blowing this ship over a bit, but also maybe there's a current that comes in from the left. And so it has to compensate for steering by steering to the left and still moving straight. So we can grab the ship at the very top level, maybe rotate that in a bit, kind of like that. And if I rewind that and solve for that, you'll see that it starts to generate an asymmetrical wave pattern. So with that set up, we can then go in here and maybe if we stop this, also give it a little bit of a tilt. So let's introduce just a little bit of a tilt like that, uh, which creates an asymmetrical contour in the water of the proxy object. And that might help too sometimes. So you can see that the responses of the waves that are being generated and the wake that's being generated is uh, quite, quite nice. So we get a V-shape off one corner of the ship and we get another V-shape off the front corner of the other side of the ship. So then uh, if we wanted to, we can now add a spectral ocean. Um, so for that, we would simply select this surface again and introduce a spectral wave. So I'm going to ignore the ship here for a second. I'm going to, 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 going to focus on that spectral wave. Uh, so if I take this down a bit towards the bottom, you can see the Bas spectral wave here has a wind speed, has a wind direction, and has a fetch distance or wind fetch distance. And if I play this back right now, you can see uh, the boat is essentially going into the wind. The wind is coming from the left, going to the right, and I want to change that. So wind direction is something I want to change. I can do that interactively. I can go in here and just kind of drag this up to like you know 90 degrees or so. And now it's actually moving towards me. If I set this to 270, it's actually moving in the opposite direction. So this would be a more logical direction for this ship to kind of be tilted in that fashion and have the ocean move towards the right. Uh, the next thing I'd like to do is maybe drop down the wind intensity a bit. So our wave patterns are going to be a little more subtle. Uh, you might want to introduce a little bit more just because that ship is tilted pretty aggressively. But either way, let's set it to two. Uh, 
And if we want to, we can also go in and modify this wind fetch distance. So the size of the swells of the waves in an ocean really depend on how, for how long and how far the wind is able to act on the ocean. So if I set that to, and this is in kilometers, to 1,200 kilometers, you can see the swells are much bigger than what they were before. And so that's another thing that you can set. Now you do have a global control in here as well called wave height that you can use to modulate the wave height down to something much more subtle. But I'm going to set this back to 1. And again, most of this is done interactively. So we have several influences and several wave solvers now acting on this object simultaneously. And the purpose of all of this is not to generate something that is final, but to essentially generate a surface that then can be used and set up for a bifrost simulation, a bifrost liquid simulation, where a, only a portion of this surface is being used for emission and a portion is being used for uh, foam generation. And that will be in a separate part. This is just to illustrate uh, BOSS. Now, the other thing that I could do at this point is, and this will be the last thing I'll show, is that I can uh, uh, grab the uh, spectral uh, wave solver and generate a cache for that. And as soon as I hit the cache button, it will start to uh, go through the timeline, writing out uh, images for each of the frames in my timeline. So if I uh, uh, drop into my Maya 2017 cache directory under BOSS, there's something in the cache directory. You can see there's a Lembic and Bifrost. There's a BOSS directory now as well. You can see that this is named after the Maya scene file that I have open, which is Bifrost shipped underscore test. And if I open this up, you can see that in this case, what we're caching out is the spectral wave. If you're caching out influence objects, you will get a separate folder uh, named after the influence object. Let's go ahead and open it up. That control the spectral wave motion per frame. Uh, that's pretty much all I have. It's a short overview of a workflow that um, helps you get set up for the actual Bifrost simulation. Thank you.